Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 11 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, where today the plan is to automate ore processing, specifically with lasers. At least, that's kind of the plan. We'll see how it goes. Um, so, last episode we got some basic power gen and some good stuff going on. I'd like to set up an ore processing section of my basement, uh, where basically I'll, I'll, I'll pulverize and then, you know, smelt all the ores and dusts. But I'd like to also use logistics or uh, laser IO to uh, route around all uh, the unprocessed ores. So like raw iron, raw lead, uranium, tin, all this stuff that's raw. I want to extract it from the chest that it's currently in, route it to be processed, and then send it back here once it's in final ingot form. Uh, so let's take a look at how we can do that with uh, laser IO today. And uh, I think the first thing I'm going to want is a couple of dedicated pulverizers and redstone furnaces. Uh, because the plan here shall be um, to probably figure out, you know, I don't want to take up these machines. I want these machines to be sit here for my crafting needs. So uh, basically what I want is, you know, when I want to craft and come over here, I want to have these machines available. So I want dedicated machines. Let's, let's go with either two or three. Let's go with three. How about three sets of machines? So three sets of pulverizers and, and or, or three pulverizers and three furnaces, um, and then we'll we'll augment them so that they run more quickly, and then we'll do some stuff with round robin to make sure that that's all cool. We'll have a good time. So let me get ready to uh, do all this, and then we'll be right back. All right, I think we're ready to go here, and it's at this point that I really wish I had laser IO working <laughs> with uh, with with the whole with the whole energy transfer thing but we'll use pipes uh to transfer energy around sound cool uh so what i'm gonna do is i know we're gonna eventually have more machines here right so we'll we'll kind of plan for that eventuality uh i might want to run this behind the walls that might not be a bad idea yeah it doesn't sound like a terrible idea to be honest with you maybe maybe over in this corner is where we'll have ore processing happening and what I think is maybe I'll have, how should we have this? How about, how about the pulverizers like so? And then the furnaces like so? And we could configure them to output on the right, auto output. And then we will say input on the top. And then you guys can extract out the top. Does that sound like a plan? I like that idea. I like that idea. Yeah. And, uh, that should work. Yeah, let's do that. And then underneath the ground here then, and let's use a little bit of shrink in action for this. Open up the UI, shrink. How great is shrink, huh? It's super cool is what it is. We want some power down here. And then I'm basically gonna run this. And I'm just spitballing here, but roughly to about here-ish. I shouldn't need you actually, the, the torch thing might work. So that's dark stone right there. Hey, there we are, nice. So what I'm gonna do is climb up this way and find my energy cell. And I'm gonna configure the back of that energy cell to be an output. And then we will extract energy with our pipes. And then we can run our pipes this way about to where we need them to be, right? So we just run it all the way over here. Now I'm gonna probably need more pipes, but that's not a big deal. You know what, I can probably save myself a little bit of trouble if I went this route. Yeah, see I think my feral flare lantern's kicking in now. That's why it's lit up down here. So running this guy along this path. Close, but no cigar. All right, so let's see, can I sneak? I can sneak past pipes with shrink on, that's cool. I can't sneak under pipes, I don't think, but I can at least sneak on the side of them. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so if I'm not mistaken, what should be happening now is my machine should be filling up with RF. Beautiful. And then let's de shrinkify ourselves. Now, this is dark stone, so I should make sure I have some of that. Dark stone. Ready to roll. All right, so now we want to, um, using laser IO, uh, sand down here uh, the appropriate resources to get um, pulverized. So let's do this. What I'm going to say is, do I want this connected to the same channel and networky stuff, or do I want this to be a separate channel? Let's make this a separate channel, just so we can kind of focus on showing off the channel's mechanic. So I'm going to want at least one more laser node. We're going to need six, right? One for basically each inventory that we're interacting with. So I'm going to need one more batch of glass panes. And then we have a little bit of iron, so that's nice. So we should be cool. And we don't really need a connector yet because not, nothing's too long distance. So what I'm going to have is the following. Uh, let's get ourselves some cards as well. I think I've got a few excess from up here from last time we played with this. And I really need to figure out like a card system that will allow these things to stack on each other, but it's a to-do for future dire. You and a bit more redstone. And what else do I need? A little bit of lapis and a little bit of quartz. Okay. I can just clean up inventory a little bit. I don't need all this stuff at all times. Yeah, the fact that these cards don't stack is kind of stinky, but I will come up with a solution for that. That's like the one annoyance, I would say. So what we want to do effectively, right, is extract from this chest specific resources, specifically the raw ingots. So what I'm going to do is get a tag for that. We've got some basic filters. Let's get a few paper dudes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up uh, one tag filter and we're going to designate it for raw materials. Cool. So any raw materials will be allowed to be pulled out of this chest. And we're going to do that on a dedicated channel for processing ores. So check this out. If I access this dude on the up, Right, so it's the chest above it. So open this UI, access the up. He's already got an insert card there, right? I'm going to set an extract card to channel orange or the first channel, and we're going to designate it to extract raw materials. Now, when I set this up here, he should be good to go, and that should be all we need. I'm also going to turn on round robin so that it keeps sorting these in a correct and smart way. Um, and we'll might as well make it a transfer amount of eight. Okay, now you guys all over here. Well, on the down, have an insert on orange. So on the down, insert orange. And on the down, insert orange. Cool. Nice. And then we can use our laser wrench to bind you to you. And it's this one that we have our stuff in, right? Yeah. So let's bind you to you. Cool. And if I'm not wrong, we're already starting to process our copper. Look at that. It's putting eight items at a time and it's round robining it. Nice. And then you guys should immediately start uh, with the whole accepting thing. So I want you to accept from the left, accept from the left, and accept from the left. And that should be nice. Cool. Now, I'm assuming that for the most part, pulverizers aren't going to get gummed up with anything, but if they do, we'll deal with it, okay? So what I want you guys to do now on the down is be an extract on the white channel, okay? So you on the down can be an extract on channel zero. Boop, boop, boop. So now any processed ingots, and let's also not forget to make those a transfer speed of eight. 
Actually, you were supposed to be down. There we go. Nice. So now it should be processing my copper for me. And this should be an automated processing system. Using laser IO. How cool is that? So now if we look in here, we'll see the copper is disappearing and the ingots are showing up. And give it a little bit of time and it'll take care of that for us really, really nicely. Now what I wouldn't mind is a few augments from thermal. Um, at the very least, I'd like hardened and reinforced. That's a good starting point. So let's get six of each of these. Uh, we're just going to need some invar, and then I think we upgrade them with electrum and signalum, which we can make in our induction smelter, right? Yeah, I think so. Just a little silver and copper should be fine. So copper, we might need a little bit more silver than we currently have. I don't know. Did I use all my silver? I've got some nickel. I've got some invar. I've got a little bit of silver. We might need a few more silvers. I will say it's a little bit hard for me to identify the difference between silver and aluminum. They all look the same. Um, yeah, let's get some of these. So we're going to want some more Electrum, some more gold. Uh, we're going to want some more Invar if we can. So it's just going to be nickel and iron, right? Should be doable. I'll come back when I get the resources and we'll put it all together. So I think one of the first places I want to set up these augments uh, are going to be up here. Uh, that'll just make some of my manual crafting a little bit faster, and that'll make things better for me. Uh, especially because as I'm making more and more augments, I'm realizing I need more and more resources that I don't already have ready, like glass and some other things. Uh, so Electrum, we just need some quartz and some signalum. So as a reminder, signalum can be made... Signalum can be made is one silver, three copper, and four redstone. We're actually surprisingly a little bit low on redstone. Surprisingly so. But let's do, what was it, three to one silver. Oh my, we don't have a lot of silver, do we? That'll do. And then you back in there, and that's looking good. Nice. A little signalum. And then I just need some quartz, which we're doing surprisingly okay on. So, yeah, I like that. With the tag filter, it made it very easy to automate this. Nice. And then I think I'm going to give you that guy. And then I should be ready for a little bit more of this. So another one of these for the pulverizer that's going to be up here. And I wouldn't mind one more of those for the induction smelter that's going to be up here. So that at least these machines run more quickly. Yeah, I think that sounds good. I'm not sure if I want to upgrade all six of the ones down in the basement at this point. Mostly because I'm worried-ish that I, there's a lot of, there's six machines to upgrade down there. That seems like a lot to me. Might want to hold off on that a little bit. Okay. So how's ore processing doing down there? Let's take a look. You know... It seems like it's doing okay. We're burning through all the copper that we have to process. And I'm just gonna let it I'm just gonna let it go a little bit slow. Like I'm okay with a little bit slow. How's power doing? Power production may not be great. Either that or it's lava production that's not. No, lava's fine. Lava's fine. We may not be producing power quite quickly enough. Uh, what I should probably do is augment my magmatic dynamos. That would be the smart play. That would 100% be the right play to go. Let's do that. Um, so, you know what? Give me back all this junk because I'm going to take care of that real quick. So I'm going to go with three of these and then I'm going to upgrade them to three of these. And these augments basically just make the machines better in every way. 
Uh, so if I pop you in here, currently you're making 40 R of a tick. I throw this guy in there, he can do 120. So that's gonna be a big improvement for us in terms of efficiency um, and, and RF production. So that should start filling this thing up nice and quick. Now, pay attention to the math on these things sometimes, it's important. So we're doing 120 R of a tick here. Um, the energy pipes, I'm trying to remember. Does it tell me on the tooltip how much you can transfer? Here it is, 256 FE every tick. So we can see on the on the tooltip up there, this guy is capable of doing 256 forge energy per tick on extract. Um, and then when we insert into this guy, he's capable of receiving 1,000. So we're good, but if we upgrade these much more, um, we're going to need to improve our energy pipe handling. So we'll see what happens when they get a little further along in the series. So long story short, we're generating a good amount of power. Uh, we've, got, we've got basically infinite lava, courtesy of the uh, ender tanks. We've automated ore processing, which is going pretty well. Uh, it could be faster, but that's okay. I'm patient. I'll wait. Let's go see what our chest looks like upstairs, by the way. So you guys can get sorted that way. These guys can get sorted this way. That looks good. So I did decide I'm a little impatient, which is a surprise to no one. So I'm actually going to just augment one of these machines. Uh, I borrowed two augments from up top there. So these guys will just run a little bit faster now. It'll help me burn through some of this backlog of ores that I need to process. All right, guys. I couldn't take it any longer. I just broke down and made even more of these augments. <laughs> so right now we should all note that each machine here is using 60 RF a tick. Uh, which is a lot. And uh, the problem with that is that that's 120 times 3, and each one of these guys is making 120. So uh, we should be aware that... Mm, also, uh, this guy can only extract 256 RF a tick, so he's actually not going to be able to extract quite enough energy to feed all these machines, right? Because we need 60 times 6 is 360, so we need, should make a, uh, a pipes upgrade. So pipe upgrades uh, will allow you to increase basically what pipes can do. Um, so we need a basic one, I think, at the very least. So that's just going to be a little bit of redstone, which I'm actually surprisingly low on. Uh, but the basic pipe upgrade, I think, will be enough to satisfy my needs uh, for the RF transfer here. Let's see. If I stick you in here... You're capable of doing 1024 RF a tick now, which is about the max that the basic redstone flux cell can handle. So he can extract faster. These guys are going to still start filling up their internal buffers, and everybody's going to be happy. Um, that should be nice, actually. So that'll, that'll get us running a little smoother. So keep real close attention, because 256 RF a tick is really not a lot. Now, in fairness, it's super cheap to get the first basic upgrade there that brings you up to a thousand RF a tick. But just be aware that pipes have a limit to how much they can transfer. And if you don't pay attention to that, it's real easy to, you know, be in a bad place with RF power. So, buyer beware. So with that all set up now, uh, we can see that we're about done processing all our copper. And it looks like we've moved on to lead now, which is nice. Uh, and we'll just continue to process this ore off camera. Uh, what should I work on now that ore processing is taken care of? That's a good question. I'm just going to put away all this junk and everything should sort properly in theory and uh everything will go where it belongs in here nice cool so yeah look we processed all of our copper now we're on to lead then we'll do some iron like we've got a lot of stuff to process here i think we'll be in good shape pretty soon yeah look at this we're burning through lead now that's awesome i'm very pleased with that let's come back in a minute once some more ore is processed and then we'll decide what we're going to do for the rest of the episode you know what's something i'd like to try out the rain shield i noticed this was in the pack and i i need to try it because this was a this was a big favorite of mine. Rain is such an annoyance to me. Um, so having a way to hopefully hide it would be awesome. I might go put it on my roof. So like, how does it work? How indeed? I'm just gonna go stick it up here on my roof. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Look at that. How cool. Goodbye, rain. What kind of rage does this have? Like, it's clearly, it's still raining. Like, you know. Okay, yeah. So it has a range of about that much. 
That's not bad. Is that like a specific chunk range or what? No, because it doesn't look like it's raining here, but it does look like it's raining here. So it's not it's not X number of chunks, it's X number of blocks, whatever that number happens to be. That is cool. I like that a lot. I really think that's neat. Big fan, dire approved. Remember Rain Shield? It was like it was a mod that I think was in random things back in the day. Uh, and you know, I don't know if random things has been updated or not, but I re that was one of my favorite items from that mod was being able to turn off the rain. So one thing I'd like to start looking at um, is going to be a patchouli book. I want to check out this mod. Simple planes and helicopters looks super neat. Uh, it lets you create planes and helicopters. So I'd like to do a little bit more exploring. Uh, I did some obvious running around and stuff, but having planes sounds like a good time. I don't know like quite how good they get, but it sounds neat. And it sounds like something that might be fun to, to mess with a little bit. Uh, so we've got some books here that we can read about. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip through this manual a little bit because I actually don't quite know how this mod works yet. Um, you know, looks like there's a bunch of cool things in it though. I like that. This looks all interesting. Uh, yeah, let me let me read through it and then I'll come back and teach you guys what I learned. All right, let's check out a few things here. Uh, so first off, I want to check out the parachute. That sounds neat. Uh, then the other thing we want to make. Uh, from what I gathered, um, basically, uh, you can make helicopters, small planes, and large planes. Small planes can hold one person, large planes can hold two, and helicopters can hold one or two people, or you can use the second slot for a uh, large upgrade instead. Uh, we need to make these in the plane workbench, though, is used to create planes and helicopters. So we need a block of gold, some obsidian, some iron, some redstone. I don't know if we have quite enough redstone, but we'll find out. Uh, it's actually, we're surprisingly low on on it uh surprisingly low on redstone when was the last time you ran out of redstone um you know we might actually be in a little i might have to go mine for redstone before i can actually do this i probably actually will i very likely will but yeah plain workbench oh i needed an axe my bad okay that works sweet yeah, I might go. I might go mine for a quick minute because low on redstone is bad. I need I need redstone to proceed. So let's come right back. All right. So in theory, I should be able to drop off everything I collected. Nice, healthy amount of redstone going in there. Sweet. And apparently, I have a bunch of quartz. That might have been when I went. Yeah, and glowstone. Maybe that's from when I went and got cobalt mining back in the day. Look at that. Sweet. We've got a lot of resources coming in. That's so good. All right, so now back to planes. So I'm going to start with a furnace engine, though I might want to try the electric engine not too far off. We're going to start with furnace, see how that works, and then make the electric engine. But the electric engine also needs a charging station. We're going to figure this mod out a little bit because it looks fun, like I said. Uh, so furnace engine is going to need uh, another one of these guys. I think I still have some of that nice and smooth stone, though it may have wound up. Actually, we have a blast furnace. I'll take that. Yeah. Easy peasy, make my life that much easier. A little bit of gold for us, or maybe a little, a little gold. I'm impatient, as you can tell. That's why time in the bottle is always in my packs. I am addicted to that mod, is all I'm gonna say. So the furnish engine goes in there. All right, so let's take a look at this uh, this plane maker. Cause that sounds cool uh so i guess looks easy enough to use uh plain workbench so we can put uh some planks in there and propellers and we'll either get a large plane or a basic plane let's go with the basic plane first uh so frankly it looks like we just need a propeller and some planks and then we have a plane if only it were that easy folks and then five planks for a Maybe it's not planks. Maybe it has to be actual oak wood. There we go. Cool. And then if you want a large plane, I guess it would be 10. There you go. Okay, cool. We'll try this out. Sweet. We should probably sleep. We, try. we probably should not be doing this when there's mobs around. Ugh. Ah. 
hate you guys. Wandering trader, please. I'm I'm gonna make a mod that literally just it's it's like I want I want I want a torch master like mod. Mega torch prevents mobs from spawning nearby. I want prevents wandering traders from spawning. That's all I want. Just no more wandering traders, please. I'm done. I'm done with the wandering traders. So I assume that the furnace engine is going to need some fuel of some kind. Uh, so I'm going to snag a little bit of coal. And let's try this thing out. So you go there. Oh, cool. Okay, neat. Uh, now how do I fuel this guy? Do I right click it? Shift right click? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Book, book help. Engines, furnace engine. You can op you can put fuel by opening the screen by default using the XQ while sitting in the aircraft. Ah, here we go, furnace engine. Cool. Haha, <laughs> that's cool. Oh boy, that's not good. That's not cool. Shift, totally not the button to press. Come back, airplane. <laughs> I'm glad it's only worth <laughs> a few resources. <laughs> I'm not a good pilot. So, in Dyer's fairness, I'm very used muscle memory wise, pressing shift equals go down, right? Like when you have creative flight or like all kinds of things, right? Shift equals go down. So, my muscle memory was I would like to start diving, so my, my muscle memory immediately pressed the shift button and I immediately ejected from the plane. So that's cool. There needs there needs to be a there needs to be a, a difference on how you would get out of the plane. I need it to be not shift. <laughs> how funny is that? Yay, Enderman. I'll take it. I don't know why you guys are out here during the daytime, but any idea where my plane went? I have no idea where my plane went. I don't see it. I was hoping to see it. We might be making another plane. <laughs> that was too funny. Oh, that was hilarious. All right, I'll be back. All right, let's try that again, shall we? Uh, I thought I made a propeller. You know what? I made a propeller and then I immediately used it for the engine. So U plus U equals regular plane. Let's try that in the less hilariously dumb way dire wolf this time boop boop x to open up the ui throw some fuel in it this time please don't hit shift dire wolf it's like my my pinky wants to hit shift like you have no idea okay cool all right so so press the down key to go down okay cool so i kind of need to like not try and hit shift this is actually really nice i gotta say i guess there's i guess there's a standard speed to it Though it seems to speed up while it's going down, which, you know, kind of makes sense. I like it. Oh, fuel, 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 fuel. <laughs> I'm like, why did it stop making noise? Is that, oh, we ran out of fuel. This is cool. Check this out. This is a really nice way to get around early game because it's not expensive to make. That is kind of cool. I could see myself building like a little runway here. You definitely want to be in third person mode when you're when you're driving this thing because there's a lot in the way of your vision. So third person mode is 100% the way to do this. But that is really pretty cool. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. What kind of upgrades are on this thing? Because there's a lot of upgrades. There's banners. Nice. Charging station. Uh, quick fix kit. So they do have durability. Oh, wow. Quick fix kits are not cheap. Uh, but that's okay. You can drop TNT from them. So adding upgrades. To add an upgrade, right click while looking at the plane and holding the upgrade in your hand. Uh, there's armor. Chests can be accessed by opening inventory while sitting inside an aircraft. Iron chests can be used. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Floaty bedding makes the aircraft float on water. That's neat. Folding upgrade makes the aircraft return to the player's inventory upon dismount. Ooh, I like that. We're going to need shulker shells, but I like that a lot, actually. 
Um, right click the aircraft with a wrench to remove upgrades. Right click with a gunpowder while sitting in the aircraft to boost it. Might be dangerous. That is not an expensive upgrade. I kind of want to try that real quick. Should we try that? I mean, should I'm, who says no to trying that? It's a rocket booster. Let's be very clear about how cool that sounds. So we just right click it with gunpowder and then we're good to go. Or right click gunpowder while we're in it. Now keep in mind, this might be dangerous. So I think we, zoinks, Whoa, well, boy, hello. Why are you? Okay, we're cool. Rocket boosters. No holding shift now. Pressing shift would be bad. The only reason I want the collapsing upgrade is because I know I'm going to hit shift by mistake at some point again in the future. And then I'm like, hey, at least then it'll go in my inventory instead of fly off into the sunset. My, my, my plane may be around here somewhere, I'm just saying. It didn't have all that much fuel, so it couldn't have gotten too far, right? Should we try this rocket booster? You ready? Here it goes. I'm going to rocket boost in three, two, one. Oh, that's cool. It doesn't, it's not a huge boost, but it's definitely noticeable. Like, it's a good boost. It's it's very elytra-y. Oh my goodness, my whole game is like, what is going on right now? You're going on. <laughs> Today we learned what can happen. <laughs> Look, it said it might be dangerous. I should have been prepared. <laughs> Oh, this mod is the best. Oh, this mod is cool. Rip my experience, but this mod is cool. So what what did we lose from that, by the way? Uh, hey, the good news is it retains its upgrades and the fuel. Oh, look at that. It even still has coal in the engine. That is awesome. That is cool. That is hilariously awesome. I love everything about this mod. I love it. I love it so much. Dire geeks out on mods. You guys know this. When I find new toys, and I and I enjoy my toys, you guys know, I 100% get excited. I'm like, this is cool. And 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 this one fits the bill. This is 100%. This is 100% a cool mod. We're going to have to play with this one a little bit more. No doubt that's going to happen. All right, so, so the plane goes into my inventory. We're going to play with that a little bit more in the nearby episodes, right? Let's sort some junk here. Uh, I probably don't need you guys in my inventory anymore. Uh, the golden backpack needs to go back into my slot. Because remember, uh, Gravestones does not re-equip your uh, curios. So keep that in mind. Uh, and I don't need this Gravestone obituary thing. So, for now, Devil 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time and play some more. Uh, I'll maybe play a little bit more with planes, but obviously I think we've seen most of what we're to see, though I want to try helicopters because they sound cool too. Um, and if I just drop this stuff on the ground, I think most of it goes into my thingy. Yeah, it does. All right, Dell 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.